So welcome, welcome. This is the last coffee break, number 12. Uh, this means that we've been doing this for three months and um, it's been kind of um, like, like when you look back at old school pictures and you see yourself 10 years ago, 20, 30, 40 years ago, like looking back at uh, number one of these videos 12 weeks ago feels like an absolute lifetime ago. And um, I genuinely want to say thank you to everybody who has been coming and joining in on the chat room. And, um, and also uh, we're going to start today by just asking Harriet Moss to come and uh, just round up for us on the, um, on the mentoring scheme, uh, which I think is, is just a triumph of people getting together without any, you know, kind of funding or any, anything so sort of institutional. It's just genuinely people wanting to connect with each other. So, uh, Harriet, how um, how's it been? Good afternoon. It's been it's been amazing. It's been such a, um, a learning experience for for me and the team behind it. I'd done mentorship schemes before, but never one that was set up within a week. Um, so I just have so many thank yous today to say. Really, I mean, first and foremost, thank you to those three hundred and sixty composers that applied. Um, the over 300 composers that we that we paired up and and have been part of the scheme with us for eight weeks. Um, thank you all so much for for giving your time, particularly those mentors who um, have given such guidance and light at this absolutely mad time. Um, thank you to Michael for picking up the phone um, and uh, <laughs> you know wanting to make this happen. Uh, it's just brilliant. Um, thank you so much to everyone at the Composer Wellbeing Collective who helped us in the pairing process right at the beginning and we're just a really good sort of sounding board. Um, and of course thank you to Jenna and Ed who loads of you will know um, from Manners McDade who are your mentorship managers throughout this um, and just a brilliant brilliant team. And then to the people who threw webinars for us, Prince and uh, Dr. Moss and um, it's been it's just been amazing and I desperately want to do it all over again but we're going to let you all have a, a summer holiday before we come back in the autumn who knows what life will be like in September but um, hopefully it'll be a little bit better different and um, but I'm sure you know the scheme in any kind of context would we just want to compose that support so um, yeah looking forward to getting off the ground again Harriet, if anybody, um, because we, you know, I've been getting messages as, as, as I'm sure you have, if there's anybody who didn't get on the scheme this time just because they didn't find out about it in time or uh, they slightly missed the boat, um, what would you recommend? Because we're not, we can't announce any new scheme yet because there isn't, there isn't one that to announce. No. But would you just, just say, just sort of follow me and you on Twitter, keep in, you know, just sort of keep in touch, keep it in the back of your mind? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we'll we'll announce as soon as we can um, whether another scheme can take place. Yeah, absolutely. Keep in touch with me and Michael, and the um, we should set up a mentorship email um, email address, which lots of you have. It's mmmentorship at gmail dot com. So you can just keep in touch with us on that as well, and um, we'll be sure to let you know as soon as possible. I think another lovely thing that's happening though is a lot of the pairs just don't want to stop talking after these two months of friendship. So, uh, <laughs> Too much to chat about. Yeah, a lot of them are keeping in touch, which, is, which has been really great to hear about. Um, so yeah, do, I mean, this week, um, all me and the rest of the mentorship managers are going to send over some, some sort of notes and tips on how to, how to wrap it up. And obviously we want to hear from you. We want to get lots of feedback. Um, so there'll be some questions there too, but please do just stick together and help each other out, you know, um, it, it might feel a bit weird next week when there's this Michael Price shaped hole. In the <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that that's weird at all. That's, no, we need to stick that's much better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I think uh, w one of the things that uh, I'm, I might gently suggest um, that we could do this week, if you have been on the mentorship scheme and I've seen some really, um, really nice examples if you feel that you want to tweet, post, talk about your experience on whatever your social media uh, channels are, uh, it's, kind of, it's, it's one of those things that I, I don't think that, I think, uh, 
composers can can be a are they really insular or not necessarily the sort of like good spreaders of good news? So if you have had something, you know, if you've had a positive experience, then then do talk about it. It just adds to the sort of uh, to the positivity rather than the you know I've got quite a lot of shit to deal with. Um, yeah, we've had lovely messages and emails and tweets and photos and selfies and everything. It's been that has been absolutely cracking this week. It's been lovely to see. Brilliant. Let's keep doing that. Um, thank you, Harriet, and thanks for everything that you've done. Thank you. Uh, but also, it's it, the the self indulgence of this process should, shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be taken for granted for me because basically I got to get in touch with all the people, all the other composers that I really like their work, and it's like, yeah, brilliant. And because everybody's stuck at home, <laughs> then they got nothing better to do really but to come and talk <laughs> So uh, I could I, genuinely not sort of blowing smoke. Um, I, I, I can't think of of, uh, of any, it's not just about the work. Um, I think it's also about uh, the kind of message that some of the, the, the work that uh, Jeff and Ben have done, it's like how they do it that, that really appeals to me as well. Um, and, and so we're, we're in, incredibly um, very honored to be joined by uh, Mr. Ben Salisbury. I'm gonna put the camera on you. So if, if there's a moment of sneezing, now it's a good time to do it. <laughs> we've got Ben. We've uh, we've got uh, also we've we've got um, and this this is a lovely idea from from Ben as well. Is that we've we've also got uh, Suvi with us. Suvi Eva, uh, Ik, Icas. Yay! Yay! Oh, close to it. <laughs> <laughs> Just like terrible. So so Suvi's been working with Ben and Jeff for about a year now. Is that right, Suvi? A bit more than that, but something like that. Yeah. Great. So also we can talk because I think we, we've got a lot of uh, younger composers on the uh, on the chat. I think it's a it's really nice to kind of hear about some of your experience as well. You know how you got to the point where um, you found yourself working uh, working with Ben and Jeff, but also you know with with other people as well. So as we as we go through, because we've been sent quite a few questions as well, um, then we'll keep coming back to you, Suvi. So it's uh, very pleased to have you on the chat. Thank you. You and and then also, um, it's Mr. Jeff Barrow. Hello, Mr. Jeff Barrow. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> there he is. Um, and I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna start, Jeff. Actually, um, and and feel free anybody else to to chip in because I I think we've had um, probably more questions for this chat than than we have for for many of the other ones, um, but quite a few of the questions. Uh, center around how how people work with each other and i get this a bit because i i uh, write with david arnold and and quite a few people as sort of a don't quite believe that two people can actually sort of work with each other um and, and so the, the the first question really actually i've got one from zach pelham who said how do you deal with creative differences and disagreements with each other which is aimed, Jeff, at you and Ben. Um, I imagine fist fights or... Did you actually meet playing football together? Is that an internet lie? No. It's, yeah, sorry, Ben. I, I'm going to put you back to... So I can see if you were going to talk. <laughs> Go on, Ben. Well, no, it's, it's, it's not... A, it is the, it's the truth. But uh, neither of us knew... I didn't know Jeff was Jeff from Portshead. Honestly, for about five years, which is the madness of five side football. Is that um, because you were you were so dazzled by his footballing skills that you couldn't imagine he had a, a second <laughs> occupation? Oh no! He, he was just he was just Jeff who, who tried the random backwards flick every now and then, and then weirdly once once in a blue moon it came off. Flair um, player. Uh, but no, and so we we were we were mates beforehand, which helps, I yeah. think. Uh, and I think it also helps that I know. Jeff's body of work. I mean, he didn't know mine, but he got to know it. Yeah. And so there's a, there's a, you know, there's a respect there. Um, and creative differences, oh, of course we have them, but they're always pretty minor. Um, and they, I don't think we dis we don't fundamentally disagree really on anything that's good. You know, if we both think something's good. <laughs> we, I don't think we've ever, you know, I don't think anyone's ever come up and said, you know, Jeff said, oh, this is really good. And I've gone, no, it's terrible. 
you know, there's degrees in the middle. But I think yeah. if you both if you both sort of really agree on what is is great work or great music or you you, you know you're you're sort of three quarters of the way there, aren't you? Yeah, we've never we've we've never had a disagreement, have we? No, no. I mean, the disagreements, the only disagreements, come with how you deal with um, the world of being a, a media composer, and they're not bad disagreements, but there are. So they're more like a political thing, you know. Jeff's quite strong-willed and might want to go. I don't. I'm, well, we're just not doing it like that. And I'm going. Well, we might, you know, because I've had a longer career in it. But actually, we, you know, Jeff fully understands that now as well. So there isn't really that many disagreements on that either. But they're never musical dis musical disagreements. Just don't exist. I don't think. No, they don't. Do you do you think because we've we've talked to uh, quite a few artists and and also. I think it's quite a common sort of uh, point of discussion at the moment about the differences between what it's like if you're working as an album artist, a recording artist, and then what it's like uh, to work in um, work as, it, as a composer in a sort of applied field where you've, where you've got a job to do. Mm. Um, do, you, do you think that being in a, a collaboration like this kind of gets you a bit of both, you know, Ben, you're hugely experienced in this, you know, starting with natural history, going all the way through. Um, so you kind of know, know those particular ropes, but also maybe because of Jeff's body of work as a recording artist, that opens a few doors or, you know, kind of uh, shuts a few people up who, who uh, might want to give yet another set of notes do you, do you find it makes a difference do, do you actually actively sort of work that from time to time we we still get notes don't worry <laughs> <laughs> I, I bet you do <laughs> um, um i think the the thing is um when we first got together i'm sorry i'm just going to go to um oh, multi-screener okay. um when we first got together we um we did come from two different angles um, you know, Ben was hugely experienced in writing music for film and TV. I wasn't, um, and but I came from a, another kind of you know recording, uh, experimenting kind of making music side. The people have kind of always said was kind of fairly cinematic anyway in that sense. Um, and so when we got together, we did kind of fulfil the roles that we kind of that we had, but very 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 quickly it those roles didn't exist anymore mm -hmm. they were we both both absorbed each other's kind of you know things that they we did and um and so so when a lot of people you know watch annihilation and think some noise is because of me it's not it's ben <laughs> you know um yeah. or, or equally some you know i don't know typically cinematic bit of m melodic stuff or whatever is me is often not it's jeff i mean yeah he's jeff's right and i think the interesting thing about the way we work is it doesn't necessarily make things easier we don't do the collaboration isn't uh, okay here's half the the film you do that half here's half i'll do that half um so we haven't made life easier for ourselves <laughs> we, we we sit well not at the moment but normally we sit in a room together and um, it's normally me on the keyboard, but sometimes Jeff kicks me off. But, and it, and it, and it's it's sort of here's an idea that one of us might have started, and then we both take turns at sculpting it. It's like you know I've got this block of clay here that uh, sort of looks like it might make something, and we each take it, have a go at, at chipping away at it. But in so in a way, it doesn't. I mean, we have done. I, I mean, that would be a, that's a bit of a a lie to say we mm. never split things up because of yeah, time yeah. constraints we have yeah. but the, the preferred way of doing it is to actually do it together which is something i hadn't ever done really yeah. and since i was in a band as a kid you know whereas jeff has done that all, all the time throughout yeah. his you know being in bands music career and so that was that was brilliant for me that was that was a, a sort of massive eye-opener and so quite often I'll, I'll might, you know, get in early and, and fiddle around with stuff. And then Jeff will come in and tear it apart or, or, <laughs> or say, have you tried it? You know, it, it's about it. having, 
if you trust each other's musical decisions, if you've got someone, uh, you know, a lot of making good music or trying to make good music is come, is making the right decisions, you know. So if someone can say, actually, that's great. Sometimes I can do something and I'm a bit unsure about it. And, and if Jeff comes in and goes, no, that's great, mate. That's really, that's working. It's, yeah. it's okay. That's, and that... We, we, we do ultimately trust each other very, very, very much. I mean, um, we really do. I, I don't think I've been. I don't think I've been in a in a working relationship um, that tr the trust has been so. You know, I, I, I you know, um, kind of, you know, it just has. It's just like, you know, I think Ben thinks I can go off and do whatever, and I think Ben and it. I, we wouldn't really question each other, really. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, and then ultimately, you know, we once we do an afternoon of that, we go down the pub, and then Subi does it all. For us. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> we're, we're in a unique position of having a third person who can who can sort of fact check in real time, like on CNN. <laughs> so it's basically, so Subi when the the dynamic when. Um, either Ben and Jeff are working together or, you know, it, it feels like um, Bristol is quite a, it looks from the outside like it's a collaborative kind of place. Does that uh, work its way through to, to you when you're, when you're working with Ben and Jeff and also other filmmakers and other musicians around Bristol? Has it felt a collaborative kind of place? Yeah, it's super collaborative. You can, yeah, like we were talking earlier, you meet one person and then you realize you know a lot of the people who live around here, and everyone's kind of like, yeah, it's quite communal, almost. Yeah. And and then in terms of the sort of process for again, a kind of loads of people are fascinated about how uh, people who are working with composers sort of what they what they contribute to the process, and you know it's often different from project to project, but what kind of things might you find yourself doing uh, on a project with, uh, with Ben and Jeff? Depends on the project, yeah. I guess. So sometimes it's more technical stuff, the usual stems. And, uh, <laughs> There's a lot of stems in everybody's world. Aren't there? Far too <laughs> yeah. many stems. Yeah, and sometimes it's, yeah, um, conforming things or, you know, if there's, like in devs, there was lots of, sort of stuff going back and forth so I might help with that and sometimes uh, I get lucky and get to do a bit of creative things here and there as well. Well um, you I mean you you wrote you know you, you've written your own episodes of Hannah you know. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, Did you? Let's, no let's just rewind a second. That was good, <laughs> good for you. Good job. Now yeah. and uh, how did uh, um, were you starting from uh, from a template and existing cues, and and then how much did you feel with that episode that you had sort of freedom to uh, to move in your own way? Because it's because it's often a difficult balance whether you're writing additional music or whether you're doing arrangements or you know uh, quite what the setup is. How did, how did it work for you there? Oh, in Hannah, um, yeah. well, we kind of made like a bucket of sounds, yeah. so we all sort of chipped in in making the sounds and uh, just using those sounds and then trying to have a certain sound in certain character and certain event or place. It did get out of hand quite quickly though, but we're <laughs> 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 kind of everywhere, but um, that was the starting point. So we, yeah, sort of. Like I mean, that's, a, that's, that's an approach that we take to most projects and films is that we, 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 create a palette um, for the film or the TV show and we we do not we basically just do not stray from it um, if something's needed later on then we'll discuss it but ultimately it's not if we say we're going to do this on on classical organ um, then then we're going to try and make the whole score on classical organ you know I mean like and we don't want to go to electric guitar we don't want to, you know, we don't want one cue to be organ, next one to be guitar, next one to be synth, next one, because we want it to be, for, to have its own voice. And, and, and we, 
we're quite we're really strict on that before i mean we're doing it working on a film at the moment before anything is really decided it's we have to find that palette yeah and at the moment we're doing it with um we're we're doing it with kind of sound design noises on a film and and some wolf sounds you know what i mean and it's and ultimately it's like are you cool with that because we can do the whole score on this we don't and we don't want to really move from that so when we do something like hannah um we will also work with um different different uh composers and uh, and friends and because and i know it sounds a bit kind of righteous here but for us, we don't like to do the thing where we work with someone and they don't get a credit. Yeah, 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 for sure. So we don't agree with it, really. Mm. Um, I know it's cool with a lot of composers and all that yeah. stuff to have hidden people and all that stuff. We know it goes on. Yeah. But ultimately, if, you know, if Susie's going to do an episode for us, she gets the credit. And yeah. we've, had, we've had, you know, fights with big corporations and and but that if you want us to do that if you want us to do it, the music that's what's going to happen we're going to do it with people they get the credit you know and and do you think that those kind of discussions that both the kind of business discussions like like you're describing and you know we've, we've all been on the the back end of those kind of you know does somebody need a certificate of authorship is somebody going to get the hump because an exec producer is not really been looking at this project until they look at it and all of a sudden they they get a bit woolly because it, it's not going the way that they wanted but so on the one hand you've got those business decisions and then on the other hand you, you're describing really clearly the creative decision to to deliberately kind of restrict the materials that you're going to use and uh I, I, and often i mean that i think probably in a nutshell that it's uh, that sounds to me one way in which you guys all produce something that sounds different is that deliberate restriction in the first place because you're not just reaching for the usual thing that fixes that cue particularly if you mm. get that cue bounced back a couple of times it's like oh fuck it let's just put a damage loop on it and be done and, and go down the path <laughs> which is nice. we all knows what everybody else does yeah then then the sort of I, I'm really interested in that dynamic because it sounds like both from the business side and from the creative side that, that you in some ways are kind of like um, pushing back a bit on the, the power that composers and music teams traditionally have. I mean, do, do you find, do you get much pushback from the people that you work with? Uh, we found us, we found ourselves in a, in a very, lucky because i mean because i've seen both i've seen sort of both sides of it you know i i, I worked for a long time doing natural history stuff uh and you know was had to pay the mortgage and just and did stuff and wrote music like almost every composer media composer has out there that i'm not particularly proud of and yeah, yeah. Chuck, and know that know what works so just did it yeah what since working with jeff um it, and why it's such an enviable position and I feel very privileged uh, mm. is that because we've done this you know pro we do consciously absolutely consciously and, and you know this involves working with the right sort of director as well yeah. uh, um, attempt to do things in a non-standard way I think that's probably our overall our sort of overreaching Mantra. I mean, that's, that's not saying we're changing the world, or you know, yeah. we look at us. Our, it, but it is, a, you know, it is true to say that is a conscious effort with almost everything. And sometimes it's small degrees, and sometimes it's. And I think um, if you if you start out with that mindset, um, you uh, and you've got a director like Alex Garland, I mean, we tend to ha have had been lucky as well to to have relationships with either a particular series like like Hannah or um, uh, directors like Alex Garland um, and Alex is is completely on board with that you know that, that's so you know to the extent that he, he he does things you know that that surprise me and Jeff sometimes like the beginning of Annihilation we had uh, we we'd written this sort of backwards 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 as in not not backwards, <laughs> backwards American, slightly sort of folky feeling 
guitar piece for for when they were in the sort of swamplands, yeah. um, which seemed a sort of slightly odd thing to do in a sci-fi film. Um, and then uh, Alex was really into that, and he took that even further. He 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 phoned us up one day and say we'd been struggling with the very opening of the film. We'd done some you know cool soundscapes, but essentially. That's what you expect when you see the beginning of Annihilation has an asteroid in space. And Alex just phoned us up and said, look, I've put, I've bunged the guitar piece over the beginning of, uh, over the first scene, the very first thing. And we, me and Jeff were like, you've gone mad. You know, this, <laughs> you, this time you pushed it too far. <laughs> too far. We, we, we watched it and we were like, no, he's, he's right. You know, yeah. this is, this is great. And, and we, we took it, we then took it even further, you know, his initial idea. And so you've got to have directors who are, willing to go down that route as well yeah. um and then but but it does to tie in what Subi was talking about mm. what jeff was talking about if you're if you're trying to approach something in a however small a slightly non-standard way and you've, you've created this palette and this approach for that particular thing it does make working with other composers like Subi and the insects uh, and simon ashdown helped us out on the first series of Hannah uh, and Jan McCulloch, as you know, so all these people, they all got credited, but they, they, we all knew as a team what the world, the musical world was we were dealing with. And with Hannah, it's not the most shocking, surprising thing. It's yeah, a sure. fairly standard, uh, not sta you know, it's a good yeah. uh, Amazon TV series. We didn't break yeah. the mold or anything with Hannah, but there was, it, it still has its own, hopefully has its own sort of voice. Yeah. Um, I don't know why we're talking about Hannah so much. That's about one of the... <laughs> but, uh, no, no, no. I, of all I, the things we've well, done. Because Subi, <laughs> Subi did yeah. it. That's yeah. it. So, so when Subi... This, there's a new series of Hannah coming out, I think, in, in a few weeks' time. And, and Subi did two episodes, um, sort of, you know, under our supervision. Yeah. And, and the same with, with, with everyone. But you had... Because she was completely allowed to run... W with her own instinct within the parameters that we set and that that just helps everyone i think mm -hmm. uh, i i i think that the um uh what i what i think listening listening to you all talk is fascinating for me is that it feels like there's a real uh that is that there's almost like a sort of like a a, a way of seeing the world that's coming through that isn't just about um you know, sort of what film you're doing, what TV show you're doing, what what this cue does, and what that cue does. It seems to be more about uh, almost like a sort of political in a way. You know how how you how you're treating people, how you're treating the process, how what what respect has the the sort of the the music has in a in a certain situation. Um, do, has it been sort of like? Um, this is a kind of chicken and egg question where do you think that sort of sense of um, how uh, how you think that music and people should be respected uh, has that kind of brought the projects to you or have you kind of gone out to try and find projects that reflect that way of way of seeing both. the world it's both really um, you know it, it's it's both um, the way it works. It's um, like, you know, you do something and I, I mean, ultimately, if someone, if someone's making a film, they want to push the boundaries of, the, of their filmmaking yeah. uh, and they want the score to do it as what well. we want the score to do it. Do you know what I mean? Um, we don't want to sound, no disrespect, disrespect for anybody doing any kind of commercial, you know, work that's, heavily written, you know, or we want it to sound like this and whatever, yeah. but we want to push that out. We want to, like, you know, and Alex Garland's kind of mine or, or Ben Wheatley or, mm. um, you know, we, you can, if they want to get, we want to be the equivalent musically as they are visually. I see. Yeah. Yeah. And, and when they and because we only add to their, their the experience they're trying to give the viewer, yeah. Because yeah. so when like the end scene of Annihilation where they're dancing, you know the, mm. the alien and you know uh, the kind of fight dancing and so on. I mean, you know, Alex just wanted that to do people's heads in as as much as 
it would do with people watching it. If it yeah, yeah. had like a traditional score, it might not have done that. Yeah. So yeah. we, so I mean, also when we get jobs, we know that we kind of win this lucky position. Mm. But you know, um, we had to prove that we were able to do it. Being just being in a famous band, yeah. you know, people just go now. Nah. I mean, but can they <laughs> can they do it? Yeah, yeah, do you know yeah. What I mean? it's like, totally. You know. And it's the same as like, um, you know, so it's, it's that weird thing. We've, we, we've had it a lot where, where we've been offered jobs and we just ultimately we know if they want a commercial kind of thing, not yeah. saying that we're really doing weirdly, we're not Mick you know, what I mean? yeah, 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 so, yeah. you know, but, but if they want something really quite stock and ultimately we don't take the job on. Well, um, or, or, or they, they don't ask us, which is, you know. <laughs> yes, the flip side to it. So, you know, and that, that, that again is, is, is not, a bad, not yeah. a bad niche to sort of carve out for yourself. And, and so, you know, any young, there are lots of different ways of, back, of going about being a composer, aren't there? You know, and yeah. I've Loads. sort of had experience of a, of a, of a couple of them. And, mm. and so, you know, I, I, I always say to... Subi and one of her great strengths is she she's sort of got the mindset that me and me and Jeff have got as well and other young people I've talked to the, the same who've got their own voice um you know you can you can try and and come up through the ranks and 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 be part of Hans Zimmer's whatever they are bleeding fingers and and, and absolutely great for you if that's what you want to do and it's it, you know I can I can I get that you know, if you've sat and been part of Kung Fu Panda 4 and, uh, and, and <laughs> Everybody done the, likes a panda. Especially yeah, when and, they can and do and martial done arts. The stint between, you know, because I know they work around the, you know, they work around the, the clock, yeah. you know, the 24-hour the clock. So you're posted in different countries, and you know, and, it, and, and, and it's, it's a challenge and, and that's great. But equally, and maybe more satisfying if you were of a certain, mu- you know, musical mindset, if you can if you can if you've got something to offer and you can give that to a to a film director that's uniquely yours i mean that's a, that's an amazing thing to do and so if you're if you're a young composer who comes from a you know a hip hop background or a you know whatever it'd be great to see more people with those from those backgrounds offering up their sort of services in a way rather than just the you know been to music college uh, uh, you know or yeah, yeah, yeah. film which is what I did yeah so I'm not yeah, yeah. I'm not knocking it yeah. at all um, but they, you know there you go right money <laughs> this is where because <laughs> <laughs> is anybody getting paid no <laughs> the, I I think for me what what um, the thought that comes up often and I've talked to a, uh, a lot of younger and older composers about the the blocks that that we all put in our ways in terms of giving ourselves permission to do something that we that we might want to do that that's different and and usually the sort of like the the major um uh kind of pushbacks tend to be sort of like oh you know if i if i'm too strong about my opinion if i'm too sort of uh if i'm if i'm not kind of prepared to to do anything that i'm i'm not going to work and therefore i don't know maybe i won't be able to pay my rent maybe you know the the sort of like how how does that how does the kind of business side of it work and and suvi if i if i come to you maybe again for the for people who are who are just making a a start could you could just fill us in a little bit on how you you came over and you were at university in bristol what what was your sort of um, uh, route to to where you are now, and also how are you paying your rent? If I can be so bold, <laughs> <laughs> be bold, yeah, that's good. Um, well, yeah, I was uh, I came here to study in Bristol. I came to study music production and sound engineering, mm-hmm. and it just so happened that there was a film school in the same building for about a year. A year. So then I just took the opportunity to go and do student films like music for their films and stuff and then one of them was this like community including film where Ben's dad was an actor 
so genius. then yeah. everybody, then, everybody needs a an act is is his dad a regular actor or was he just no, um, no. just he no. just wandered in he, he was very good i have to say it's not that he'll ever watch this but he was very good in that film but he's it was it was amateur actors and he's retired and he and he he wanted to have a go and so i went along to the screening of the film uh to show support and and yes dad's bit was very good uh but also <laughs> also the, the music was really good and I, I sat and said to my wife, I said, you know, this music's really good, isn't it? And it was my, my wife. She said, well, find out who did it and yeah. get in touch with them. And so I, I yeah. went up to the producer uh, who was there in this little screening. And I said, you know, who, who did the music? And said, oh, it's a young student called Subi. And I said, well, can you pass on to from me how much I enjoyed it? And that if she wants to meet for a coffee and talk about the business for want of a better word, then uh, I'm happy to do that. And so that 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 was really it. So Suvi came and met me for a coffee, and and it, and the timing was right. I actually needed some help with some very boring stuff, and I said, "Do you want to help out doing this?" But so it, it kept. So the advice would, that I always give to to people, you know, uh, wanting to try their hand at film music composition is you've got to you've got to somehow find some bits of film to write music <laughs> for that you can then show someone whether it's someone like me or jeff or or another director um what you can do uh to, and it's that's the hard catch 22 thing um definitely mm -hmm. what did you, what did you think suvi i mean like so uh, you know from from that from that point what did you have an idea of what you wanted to get into, but was it kind of commercial writing, you know, trailers, what, I mean, video, music stuff, I mean, what was it? I mean, At what point? When, before? I well, think, yeah. When, yeah. When, I think when you first met, uh, met with Ben, did you, yeah. did you? No, you know, it, well, when I first came to Bristol, I had no idea what I was doing. Mm -hmm. I literally just needed to like, go somewhere else, but where I was, which was in Finland back then. And then, I think when I did music for those student films, that's when I realized this is something I, I really enjoy. And uh, obviously, you know, the student films are very different. There was a bit of more commercial things and, and then there was uh, more experimental stuff. And, and you know, I, no, I, I didn't really have like a plan, this is what I want to do. But I think whenever there was a good story that wasn't like to, you know, if, if not, you know, I wouldn't see myself doing like a massive action blockbuster thing. Mm. Definitely not. And not, yeah. I leave the traders for people who are really good at doing that as well. <laughs> so I think, yeah, more of the sort of story based things. Yeah. And uh, on the back onto the, the horrific subject of, of, of business, but I think particularly in this context of sort of uh, people not feeling that they can give themselves permission to write what they want to write because of that. I, I know um, that with Invader trying to sort of, um, is, is there a bit of taking, taking back the means of, uh, means of production in terms of uh, try, trying to kind of um, make film scores have a kind of presence in a, in a record company kind of way? Is, 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 is is the point of having a label like Invader to promote the music or to make money to sustain other things that aren't as commercially viable? Or how, how do you think, how, how Jeff, does, do you feel that that fits into the world uh, well, of your projects? Well, it's what the thing with that, uh, sorry, I keep on flicking over. It's all yeah. right just to keep it. Is there a way just to keep it so it's not my ugly face that keeps on smashing it? <laughs> <on the top? laughs> just, <laughs> I think it might just be you have to hold hold a paperback book in front of it. Oh right, that. oh yeah, something like that. Yeah. But so we, we all want to see you, Jeff. So so anyway, the, so the thing is that um, I mean, first of all, Subi, um, how have you? I mean, because your question was about money, and yeah. and um, how how has it been financially? Do you know what I mean? As an assistant, or... yeah, yeah. And how has it been, kind of just generally, you know, like living in Bristol, trying to do it. 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, after uni, obviously, no money and stuff. So you had to, it was like, find a job or go home situation. So then I'd work in like, you know, I did get like pretty nice jobs in Sainsbury's and that kind of thing. So, uh, and after that, yeah. you know, assistant has been like a very, very welcome thing because yeah, it's a lot better than Sainsbury's. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> There is, I mean, there is, it is a, it is a weird subject, isn't it? And obviously I, I pay Suvi when she works for me. And then I, you know, when she does jobs of her own that might come through me or come from some, you know, she, she yeah. gets the, and, and I, I don't, with neither, none of us, I've never had an assistant before. I've never had anyone help me out. Um, and Suvi hadn't done it before. And we just didn't really know. We, we had no idea how, how it worked really. And, and so we sort of, stumbled across a way of you know there's a there's a sort of per hourly rate of you know when you're doing dog's body work yeah. which isn't great fun but needs to be done and actually Subi does less and less of that now uh, and probably on the next big thing we do I might have to find someone yeah, else, else to, to do that it. and then when you get paid when you when you when you do actual writing uh even if it's based on on ideas that me and Jeff might have had, you know, even if you're following the template, yeah. you get fully credited. Uh, you get your. It's hard to work out sometimes. And in the first sure. series, it was a nightmare. And we came up with a scenario for the second series, which we all just agreed with at the front. But you get your your uh, publishing royalty if you are part of that writing you know, on that episode. Yeah. So so uh, and you get paid the the. We came up with a writing part of the overall music budget per episode ah, so again back yeah, yeah. to Hannah and yeah. so however that was split up me and Jeff did two episodes so we got the writing part of the budget for that yeah. Suvi did two episodes she got the writing part you know and, and yeah. so on and and hopefully you know well I know they they I know that that fee was a lot better than the fee I was getting when I first started doing natural history programs I mean a lot a lot a lot better so hopefully that is, uh, you know, how is is a fair, seems to me a fair way of doing it. I don't know that I, I don't know the the correct way of doing it. And I remember asking yeah. my agents, you know, Daryl and uh, uh, Cool, how, how's it done? And they didn't have a correct way. I, so yeah. I don't think there is a correct way. I think some people, you know, pay someone a yearly wage, mm. uh, and they just do whatever it takes. It, you know, whatever comes up. Um, it, it's been. You know, I, I hope you know, it was constant phone calls during lockdown at the moment to Suvi and saying, you know, are you OK? Yeah. For, you know, do we need to find stuff to do? Um, and, you know, occasion and, and the lucky thing about I wouldn't suggest being an assistant is the ideal thing for everyone. Mm. Either you, you might really just want to go out there and do it on your own. But some, but hopefully you can do a bit of both. You know, we're talking about Suvi as an assistant, but she's she's not really. She's yeah. a composer in her own right, who happens to be able, you know, came along at the right time to help me out, me and Jeff out. Um, and so, you know, she will definitely, unfortunately, me and Jeff, <laughs> she will definitely start getting her own <laughs> you, you, could, jobs. you can make some um, calls about that, Ben. You can get uh, her thrown off some uh, jobs uh, if it's I getting in the way. Be, yeah. <laughs> I want to be your agent. Yeah, that's true, yeah. <laughs> I want to be but, your manager. <laughs> I, can, I can sit at home whilst you work then. Yeah. <laughs> I I think they I mean it it's kind of it's an awkward thing to talk about but and and you know just just seeing a few of the comments in the chat room at the moment say saying that it's it's not it's not often talked about. And and I I I wonder whether there there's something about I mean you know we're we're talking a lot at the moment in in lots of different parts of you know, parts of society about access to whether it's to, you know, just healthcare and, you know, sort of safe streets or, or is it in our world, it's kind of, you know, access to, uh, to jobs in the first place. And, you know, and, and there being a much, much wider range of uh, musical voices that, you know, I definitely want to hear and oh, okay. and and i think it, it feels like because particularly because we're a bit sort of shy about talking about money th this does feel like it's one of the pieces that that gets missed out a bit because if you can't afford to do the job then 
you know, it, it goes to people with independent money who can afford, you know, who their families can afford to pay, pay their rent mm. for 10 years. And that so you, 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 I, mean, a- I mean, we all, we all ultimately know that the, usually the more money you get paid, the crap of the work is. Um, <laughs> I, I and- wish that worked for me. Crap work, crap money. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, oh, the gotcha. thing is, it's like, you know, the really rich people I know don't have to churn out some shit, you know, yeah. and and um, and the really good people kind of, you know, struggle because they they want to do good stuff. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, and and it's it's, t- you know, it just even getting a job is just hard enough, Yeah, yeah. you know. I mean, like technology and everything else and people being able to be sat on their computers and with Pro Tools Logic and, and granular synths and God knows plugins and everything else. Like, you know, if you hear a Hans Zimmer score, pretty much the next day you can go in a chat room and find out what plugin it was and you're <laughs> doing it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like, so it's a, t- I mean, it's a, t- it's a tough game. I mean, so, I hate to say it, but I think sometimes you've got a, you know, what's that? Thick screening too. Yes, absolutely. And, um, but, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it is a really, really, it's a really, really tough business. It's, yeah. I mean, it's tough for, it's tough for people that have even got the opportunities to get in, let alone the people that don't come from any, but any kind of idea of, um, Nobody that they, they know in their families or extended family ever work in the media or anywhere near it. Yeah. Um, that is a massive, like, you, you're talking about going to space. Hmm. Yeah. You know, it's the equivalent of, to Absolutely. some kids of going to space. It's just, and then, and then for the ones that actually managed to go to university and maybe have got some funding, it's still incredibly difficult for them. <laughs> so, so I don't want to put people off by any means, but, um, but, yeah it's and and obviously what we're going through at the moment is a real is a it's a very 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 tricky one but you've got to be clever you've got to be clever for it you know it's like i don't know i always think as well if you do some really really good stuff really out there properly nuts things that people haven't done or tried and you don't grab for the standard sounds people will notice you they will just notice you. It happens. It happens to bands. It doesn't happen to every single one of them. Mm. But it's, I mean, you only got to look at, you know, I mean, Mika a, is a, is a, what example she is. I don't know. But, yeah. I mean, she just did some nut stuff. And then everybody just went, wow, yeah. I'm having that. I've, yeah. I've, what is that? You know? Um, and it's i don't know yeah anyway it's i mean like you said someone's just said someone's just said about having a day job and and doing it and that's the reality you know yeah yeah and and it's it's across the board in the music industry isn't it that um you know it's much easier for people like me from middle class backgrounds with you know whose parents can support them when they're in their 20s or, or you know you've got a, a room a, a, to live in it, it and and somehow we have a as a community we are, we've got to try and change that shake that up i don't i don't know the answers but the 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 fact that we're it, it really not not even i mean obviously because of the social morally justifiable point of it but also the amount of voices that you're missing out on it yeah. seems crazy that you would you know, we, we all want to go to the cinema or watch TV programs or listen to music that somehow makes us sit up and go, bloody hell, that was, as Jeff just said, that's, that's you know, where's that come from? And if you're, if you're making the, if the curators of that music and that sound are all coming from the same area, you, it, the, you're just not getting the diversity of voice as much as anything, you know, that's taking apart, taking away the, the, socially justifiable aspect of it all but I, I you know i haven't got any answers maybe you know educate the way music education is uh seems to be pretty stuck from what i 
God, uh, we could go off on a rant here that might go, we need another three <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we can do an episode two. But yeah. I'd, I'd say that the, uh, uh, in terms of music education, I mean, I, I go back and visit at the, at the university that I went to, but there, there, is, a, there is a story that at, at one point there were uh, more people on the course called Tom than there were women. <laughs> So it was, it's one of those. So I think I think you know I think you know where that one was going. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um I, I, I really appreciate actually you um everybody just being uh just being honest and direct as you as you are about this because I, I think it's the the for, for me anyway, again I tell you, like you say, Ben, I've got I've got no no solutions. There's you know, all of this is much much too complicated and uh and, and baked in for, for there to be any quick fixes. But I, th- I think the k- a kind of reality of a conversation about it, where we can all be a bit more, uh, feel a bit braver, those people who feel they don't want to rock the boat if they're done well, or those people sort of who, who are trying to come up and, and do interesting work. I, I, I think it's sort of, um, if, we, if, if we're not transparent, then it's really difficult to to change anything. It's really because you can't even see what it is. You can't see what you know what's really going on. Mm. But anyway, that that's my uh, that's that's I I could rant on that for a long time too. Um, I've, I've got a, a bunch of questions that I've that I'm not for for everybody in the chat room. I'm really not ignoring your questions. It's just I'm I really want <laughs> really happy to chat with uh, Ben and Jeff and Suvi. Um, but I'm gonna uh, quickly touch on. Uh, I don't know. It's the last one, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna gonna throw questions which are sort of uh, can be a bit challenging. One from Charlie Jefferson about um, about mental health, and uh, he quotes a, a recent Looking Glass report commissioned by film and TV charity concluded that people working in film and TV are more likely than average to experience a mental health problem. Um, and he uh, says thanks, Jeff, for Dummy, which helped him through difficult times as a teenager. Um, but uh, and, and I think I'm going to, because, because we're really sadly sort of like running out of time. I, if I can fold this into a kind of like um, into a, what advice or what, what experiences have you got that can kind of contribute to um, sort of people's general sort of sense of wellness. Cause this is, this has been a, a tough time in, in general, mm-hmm. but um, Ben, maybe if we go, go to you, first have you got any ways that you kind of keep a keep a handle on on your sort of uh how your your family works and how your own health and well-being kind of hangs together Can play we talk? Football. um what Do play you know what? Good football yeah. i mean i i <laughs> yeah, have... you know it sounds but that that is yeah. i think jeff would agree that is our our both of our our sort of outlet neither of us we're both crap you know, um, <laughs> and, uh, and we play in a very crap team. But yeah. um, <laughs> you know, that sounds like a glib answer. But it's no, not. I don't think it is. Yeah. Um, and and I think anyone, if you care about what you're doing, you get wrapped up in it. And I, mm. I get a, there's a constant. You know, my wife, she can see it on my face when I come home, and and she says, "You're still there. You're still in it. You're still it's still in your head." And and you know, Debs was a really, diff- you know, not difficult. It's a, it's, you know, first world problems, but it yeah, was yeah. a difficult series to work on. Yeah. Um, as, yeah, but as first world problems go, it was a shocker, wasn't it? Debs? Yeah. <laughs> really? Was it? Was yeah, it? Was it a? Uh, one, it, of, one of those gigs. Yeah, it was, it it was really, really, demanding. Really, really, yeah. really demanding. Um, just because of the way Alex works. Uh, and the way we work and the sort of perfectionism of it all and uh, and and we're all very proud of it but it was like bloody hell it was it was hard it was hard and so somehow and i haven't learned the trick yet but Mm. to to step step away from the all-consumingness that making music or being an artist or doing whatever it is creatively you and and actually i found weirdly found lockdown a bit of a i mean it's been hard in lots of other ways i've got a daughter who's on a, the shielding list and so that that's difficult but actually the the work wise the 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 release of not 
you know, we haven't got the pro- it's the first time I haven't been under pressure work wise for yeah, yeah. so long. And I've just thought, do you know what? Actually, I could maybe retire. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> don't tell, <laughs> don't tell Daryl. You know, no, I won't. But I've been scared of, I think I've always been scared of not doing something creative, uh, thinking, you know, I'll fall apart or whatever. But actually, it has taught me that you don't, you can just take your foot off the pedal a little bit. I don't know about you, Jeff. Yeah, it, I mean, the first month of lockdown was one, it was actually one of the nicest months I've ever spent in my life, I think. Um, it was, it was really, I mean, I've suffered an, an awful lot from mental health kind of issues and, and um and kind of it's been a constant fight and um and it's you know it's tough but what actually you know you get a lot of people that talk about mental health in the film in and tv industries and um and sports and stuff like that i think people it's people that excel in in um in ways of kind of wanting kind of perfection and wants it putting themselves under pressure and creatively driving themselves harder than anyone else and and um you know i i think that's that's what contributes to the mental health issues but also you've got to be a bit mental to want to do you know want to sit in front of a computer or, or a keyboard for 24 hours until you come up with something you know it's a it's a very very kind of it, um balanced thing mental health and creativity um you know and a lot of people in our world struggle with it you know um like i said it's just you've got not you've got to learn not to beat yourself up basically don't give yourself too much of a hard time um that that's ultimately i think what it what it is you know and, and if you do learn it totally can you put it on a postcard and send it to you? <laughs> It'd be great. Write, it, write it on a book and stick it in an airport yeah. and you make so much money you can definitely retire then if, yeah. if there was an easy answer um i i genuinely could do this forever i i uh i love both the the work that that comes out of of the studio that you guys all do but also i i a really big fan of the way that you do it i i i think you're contributing really greatly to the to the conversation and to the and to the way that people uh opening up the possibilities for a lot of other people about how they create their work um i'm just going to go around because unbelievably it's four o'clock already and uh, i promise that i'd only take an hour of your valuable time oh um, uh, look i'm i'm all right i'm all right mine. you guys good yeah, yeah yeah oh good well I get, i'm gonna go around i've just got a couple of questions and the, and i just want to respond as well to people in the in the chat who are asking a bit because we've we've done uh business and well-being but there's a lot of people asking a few more techie questions and so i'm gonna uh I'm gonna th- throw a, a couple of these in i can actually see uh, one from ace uh, asking about your process about coming up with sounds and ideas right at the start and also uh we've got one from jim sanger that was emailed in about how much time you set, spend at the start of a project um I, th- I think that the the process that you guys do uh which creates that template that then you you try and sort of keep within uh is it is that process different for every show or, or do you have a, like a a couple of weeks of experimentation that you do what, what would you where would you start when a new gig comes in what you uh, well, well are you gonna sorry. go Jeff? Well, it sort of depends. It, it depends on the project. Uh, the Alex Garland ones are always hard it, it, and need a big sort of have done so far. Maybe we'll work it out on future ones, mm. but they've all involved a long period of time We're, between me, Alex, and Jeff, all three of us sort of bashing our heads, thinking of chucking existing bits of music at each other and 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 talking about the process or alex always basing it on the the heavy duty concepts there are in his films you know so that's always a good starting point so with annihilation or so with devs for example he 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 was very he he said right from the beginning there are very strong religious overtones uh, to this whole thing and 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 so devotional music of some sort was a key and then he got us 
he got us to go up and visit the set, you know. Um, so we saw that amazing, uh, yeah. the Debs, which was in a, in a warehouse in a, a massive soundstage in Manchester. Uh, and was we, we walked in and it was like walking into a an installation a massive installation art piece yeah it, it, it was incredible and, and we walked into and we all had the same and bob and tim came up as well the insects yeah. and um we had it we all walked in and said this is like a temple you know this is literally like uh, a temple and we sat down in the hotel afterwards and we we just all said you know um and so so ideas formed from there and then we spent about two, three weeks in Jeff's studio with every sort of, you know, chime and bell and, yeah. and, and sort of hippie, happy drum type thing we could find and did loads of recordings and, and sort of gradually, and so it was a long process with, with devs and got a load of, load of uh, sort of um, people from around Bristol in to sing and do. Yeah, I was, I, I was going to ask about the voices because obviously they're so sort of, uh, they're, there's almost like every kind of vocal treatment and use, you know, list, listening through to the score, there's, there's moments of sort of like more traditional sort of like choral singing. And then there's voices definitely just used as textures and sort of clearly sampled and made it, made it to other things. Did the, was, was there like a, a thought about voices right from the start yeah. from that temple idea? Yeah. The, the voices came as a direct, were a direct response to, yeah, religious religious music, and so me and Jeff wrote very early on wrote a a a a hymn, uh, yeah. which was the, this hymn that that became the day will break. It was called, and and it we sang it with this choir we put together, which was a sort of amateur cult type choir. We wanted to get the feeling of, and then that changed to be a you know a, a more traditional sort of medieval sounding choir. But essentially, that was it. So there was that approach. Uh, that was a pillar that was, you know, Alex latched onto straight away and said, this is great and we're going to... Uh, and that, that also came from a bit of found music that Alex had found that was always going to stand the, stand in the series as well, which is the first thing you hear musically, which is a piece by the... Jan Garbrecht. The, yeah. Jan, Jan Garbrecht. So that was there. And so that influenced that. And then there was a, a sense that Alex wanted to change, didn't want to change things as the series went on um uh so we knew this pillar would come back and 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 you know it would have its full iteration in episode eight but elsewhere the voices were gonna be warped or gonna have this sort of chanting thing and then about halfway through the series we we were sort of stuck to a degree uh with a particular cue um and uh Suvi will remember it well it was a it was objects being input uh into the dev system a mouse uh oh yeah very striking yeah, yeah, sequence. And, and bob and tim had had a go at writing some music for it and alex had gone no it's not quite right i'd had a go at writing some music and alex had gone no it's not quite right yeah. i um, went on tour jeff went on tour <laughs> with Pete. So he wasn't even was there deliberately on tour yeah, it's it, like, was I'm right, not it, it was <laughs> definitely the right time to be going on tour and um uh <laughs> <laughs> and I remembered Suvi had written this piece. We were going to do something together a while before before Debs, and um, and I, I I just remembered it. And I tried it against the the sequence, and um, it was I thought it was brilliant. And I said, immediately sent it to Alex. I said, "This is written by Suvi," and he was like, "Who's yeah. Suvi?" And I said, "Well, she, she you won't have known, but she's been doing <laughs> yeah. been on the background here all the time." And um, uh. It, it, so then we took that piece and I wrote an ending for that piece and that was Suvi's voice essentially based on Suvi doing some vocal experimentation mm -hmm. um, and then we sort of that then became that was in episode five and the way so I'm going off on a massive tangent here but yeah, the way it worked is it, it, it we were working on it like an eight hour feature film yeah. so we were able to then backseed uh, Suvi's voice because I knew that was going to come in in episode five, and, yeah. and you know it's always happens with Alex. You're always writing ten scores for for every every scene, you know, yeah. going back and changing something. So then Suvi, Suvi's voice in particular became a um, a sort of thread that ran throughout. So there was these sort of three, maybe four vocal things yeah. that that ran through the series. 
Um, so that, and that's just the voice aspect. So don't ask me any other questions about it. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll be here all day. <laughs> <laughs> but as, and, and to Suvi, uh, how, how does it feel then being the voice of devs? How is that for you? Oh, well, <laughs> devs, that's pretty, yeah. I mean, you were, you were. <laughs> um, yeah, when, when Ben said that, yeah, Alex likes your piece. I, was, I don't think I remember anything else from that day. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, really? Okay. <laughs> wow. And then, I mean, yeah, yeah, that piece was like originally very sort of complex and filled with weird, you know, sounds, and we sort of reduced it to something that fits them. And um, yeah, it's it's. I remember watching it back from from uh, BBC, what was it, a player, and yeah. I was just like, oh, that's you know, weird hearing your own voice there. Very but, much. But um, it was, yeah, it was, yeah, obviously amazing, amazing to get to be part of it. Well, nice. congratulations to, to all of you and to the guys from the insects as well, because, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's amazing work. I've, I rewatched it uh, here while I've been trying to blow the dust off everything, and it was, yeah, beautiful, beautiful stuff. Uh, I'm going to draw a line under it there with a certain amount of uh, sadness because, uh, well, sadness and also not sadness because that means I don't have to do any more video chats. <laughs> 10, 12 now. Do some bloody work for once. Well, the, well, yeah. well done for doing all of this. Yeah, oh. well done. Good stuff. A proper achievement to get so many people, so many composers actually talking. Uh, well, you know, maybe we'll do it. All more. Maybe we should all meet in, in, in a massive pub when we're, uh, when we're allowed to. Do you, do you know? <laughs> Do you know what? I think if we had, uh, if we did a sort of like a, a division of how much time everybody had spent going, I want to go to the pub in these, yeah. we could make just like a super cut of all the shit I need to go for a drink. Yeah. Um, yeah. But th thank, thank you to everybody genuinely. Because like every, every person who's on the list on the chat is a, is a, is a proper person, you know, is an actual like somebody who's a, a friend in real life or, a, you know, would be a friend if we all were in this, in this pub together. And for everybody that's been supporting everybody else through this, I kind of, you know, it's, it's maybe it's the end of this particular little chapter of it, but definitely, you know, it's kind of, uh, hopefully it's not the end of us trying to be uh, supportive to each other and a, and a, a community, a proper community that cares about each other and is kind to each other when we get the chance. So I, I'm going to say, I'm just going to come around for a, a physical wave, if possible. Uh, ben, to you, if there's a, a gesture that you feel appropriate. <laughs> and to Jeff, thank hey. you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for, for your work and also for being so honest. And Subi, the voice now, forever will be the voice of devs. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Everybody really appreciates your experience. So thank you to everybody. Uh, it'll be the end of this. This video will be up tomorrow when I get around to it on YouTube, hopefully by lunchtime. Uh, but keep in touch. Make the most of these new connections that you've made. Uh, follow everybody on, definitely follow Jeff on Twitter. I'm, I'm, I find myself cheering Jeff's tweets. Come on. Oh, don't. And, <laughs> and, but, you know, take, the, take this opportunity to, uh, I, I think, you know, if if we can connect a little more, uh, be a little a little more kind and a little a little more thought for each other, that that would be no bad thing. So thanks very much for for watching this one, and uh, yeah, stay in touch online. Thanks very much, everybody. Cheers. Nice one. Bye bye. Nice stuff, bye bye. Good stuff.